right, let's do another example. A researcher believes that students may do better on a test when taken in the same classroom where the materials were learned. To test this theory, she plans to present a lecture and then give students a multiple choice quiz on the material. She knows there's a lot of variability in the student's academic ability. Design a study to test this hypothesis. Okay, so she knows a lot of variability on the student's academic ability. That's giving you a hint right there that you need to do something before the experiment based on academic ability. So you could match on academic ability or you could block on academic ability. So if you only have one variable, sometimes it's easier to block, right? You could just block on academic ability versus if you match on it, you know, sometimes those pairs, they're different in other ways. So in this case, we'll do a, um, so well, let's think back. Can we do a placebo? Well, there's no placebo in this, right? Can we make it double blind? Well, probably not, right? You know where you are. You don't have to explain to the people maybe that this is what you're testing, but the person giving the experiment is going to know, well, I'm trying to test the classroom, and these people are in the classroom or they're not in the classroom. So we're not going to be able to double blind, but we can um, block. So we will block on academic ability. So maybe we'll have our blocks will be A, B, C, D, F students. It depends how big the class is, right? So we're going to block on probably actually D and F that could go together. Right? And then we're going to randomize within the block. So I made these a little bit too close. So we take an SRS of those who got A's, the SRS of those who got B's, C's, and then the SRS. And then we have group one, group two, and then we'd have the uh, new classroom, original classroom, and then we'd compare results. And then you do the same thing for all these different grades. So the only way that this maybe wouldn't work is if you had a small classroom and you only had a few people A, a few people B, C, then you wouldn't want to stratify. Then maybe you'd match, right? So if you only had a few A students, you'd match on, you could match on grade and then one other thing. Um, or, you know, you only had two DF students, so you maybe just match on that, right? Otherwise, it's kind of hard if you only have two of each to, to do a, a simple random sample. So you have to look at the question. In this case, you weren't really given enough information to say, oh, I know the right answer is to stratify, or I know the right answer is to match. But you did know that you had to take it into account somehow. So whatever you do, justify what you're doing. So generalizability of results. That is the point of all of this experimental design, right? We want to determine if our data is, and you'll hear this term a lot more as we go on, we want to determine if our data is statistically significant. That means, is the observed effect so large that it would rarely occur by chance? And we'll talk much more about this later in the class. So if we design and conduct our experiments well, we can generalize these results to the whole population. So if things are statistically significant, we, seen, we can say, oh yeah, in the whole population, they'd be statistically significant. So remember, we need to control, we need to replicate, and we need to randomize. And then we can generalize. Thank you for visiting educator.com. Hope to see you again soon.